The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Your Excellency, Alhaji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, the convener of this meeting, the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, I've been Sumana Kingsford Bagbin. Your Ladyship, Justice Getri Tokon, the Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana, for the sake of time, please permit me to address the rest of us as ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, and Merry Christmas to you all. The Christian faith rests on two sure beliefs. One at the beginning of Jesus' story, and the other at the end of the story. The belief at the beginning of Jesus' story is the incarnation of Christ. Then the story at the end is the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. These two beliefs ought to be celebrated. This distinguishes Christianity from all other religions. These two events ought to be celebrated. In periods like this, we sing and praise and talk about Jesus. We talk about a name, and that name is the name Jesus. So I will want to take some time to talk about names. Names. Now Rita was telling us that soon they will take over. Now normally when we are celebrating uh, Carol's night and all that, it is tied to the end of year Thanksgiving. So as we are thanking God for 2023, what that means practically is that the number of years ahead of you is short by one. And so we don't have time. So the positions we are occupying, you should be asking yourself, when the time comes and you are no longer in this position, what legacy? Are you going to leave behind? Because opportunities are difficult to come by. When you have one, you must seize it and do good and make for yourself a good name. Now, the one that has assembled us all together is the name Jesus. It is because of him that we are here, the name Jesus. I want to say that the authority in the name Jesus was not just conferred on him. He gained it as due return. He gained it as due return. Scripture says in Philippians 2 from verse 5, In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. And that is very important. Any time that we have space to live and to lead, don't use it for your own advantage. We should learn of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one who has a name above every other name. What did he do? Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. And I like the verse 9. Therefore, therefore means in consequence of his action. God, as a result, exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. So Jesus earned the name. He did something, and then God also had to lift him. So I want to talk about names. 
this is my brief talk. I want to establish the fact that names are very important. And then I will encourage you to desire for a good name, not for good positions, for good name. See, God named Adam, and since then he has not done so ever. So he bequeathed the naming of creation to Adam and by extension to us because God wanted everything to have a name, tangible or intangible, things that can be perceived, anything that can be imagined, God wanted it to have a name. So he backed off from naming people or naming anything apart from Adam, and then the power to name creation was given to us. One of the major events in our lives is the naming ceremony. Yours was done at a time that you didn't know, but I'm sure that you have done some for your child. Now, because whatever name that you are named is supposed to be adored, people should know that you respond to this particular name. Now, if perchance you want to change this name, the law says that you must go through a process. So names are very important. You just don't tell us you are Kofi and then tomorrow you say you change your name to Kojo. You have to go through a process because names are very, very important. We all are identified by a certain name. And the name that you are named should be jealously guarded. Even God, scripture says that, lead us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Don't be careless. Because your behavior will affect your name positively or negatively. Names are very important. But names are not just for identification. No. No. All that a person is, is vested in his or her name. How many of you know Mr. Bean? Yeah. So when I say how many of you know Mr. Bean, you will start laughing. Mr. Bean is not here, but whoever Mr. Bean is, is vested in his name. Now, so we are all containers and with a label, your name. When your name is mentioned, what is in the container will pour out. Work on your name. Second Samuel 20 verse 1 says this. Now, a troublemaker named Sheba, son of Bikri, a Benjamin happened to be there. Now a troublemaker named Sheba. So his name is Sheba. But inside the Sheba is troublemaking. And so when you mention Sheba, what comes out of the name is a troublemaker. Who are you and what is your name? What is your name? Your name always stands in for you. You and your name are one. We heard His, His Excellency the Vice President reading that uh, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the, and the Word was God. You can't separate a person's name from who the person is. That is why sometimes your lawyer can go to court in your name without you being present. Because whatever you be there personally to do, your name can do that. That is the more reason why we don't need Jesus to be on earth here to be walking amongst us. His name is enough. His name is enough. Your name can always stand in for you. Now you destroy a person's name and you destroy the person. So carry yourself well so that nobody destroys your name. Now Jesus taught us that in prayer, we should know that we have a father in heaven. But he says that that father in heaven's name should be hallowed. It should be sanctified as holy. So look at how the Godhead protests their name. So you can't be careless. So far as your name is concerned. Now, the reason why God lifted Jesus and did not give him, let's say, half of his universe, but gave him a name, was to underscore the importance of names. Your name is the best asset you have. Please, value it. Your best asset 
is your name, not your child, not your position. You need to carry yourself well so that your name is not destroyed while you are still alive. When your name is destroyed while you are still alive, ladies and gentlemen, you could be useless. You could be useless. Carry yourself well. But there are certain things that are better than money. In 1981, Bob Marley died. At the time he died, he was one of the richest in the world. He was arguably the most popular person on earth at that time. Bob Marley was arguably the most popular person. So he had a lot of friends and a lot of loved ones. But his money and his friends could not save him from death. Not at all. So Bob Marley died. See, things like good health is better than money. Peace is better than money. Wisdom is better than money. But the greatest of all is good name. Proverbs 22 verse 1 says this. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. I want to take that again. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. So a good name is far esteemed than stature. A good name towers above education. It's worth more than property. A good name or a great name does not only bring security to the bearer of the name, but it's also a purchasing power. You see, when you have a good name, it buys things that even money cannot buy for you, like favors. Sometimes you may enter an interviewing hall. Then the panel who are supposed to interview you, you go in there under some kind of feeling because you don't know how um, you are going to be treated. You are prepared overnight. You just entered the room, and then the one who is chairing the panel says, what? You look like a friend. Do you know Mr. Nyamiche? says, yes, sir. He's my father. Oh, that man. That man was a good man. Now, if you don't go through the interview, and then a VV, how? Now, see, you realize that that good man, that good man, even though he's dead, that good man, his name can invoke blessing on the descendants and those who are associated with that particular name. That is why God told Abraham, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Once your name is great, you can be a blessing. Please protect your name. Don't just be careless with your name. Protect your name. Be very, very careful. Soon we will not be here. What will be left is good name. You see, good names outlives the bearers. Such people, we say they never die. Not that they are not dead, but their names will remain with us forever. Tomorrow you may not be occupying this position, but what will take the position and occupy it forever will be your good name. But brothers and sisters, good names are end. The bigness of a man is determined by the cause the person lives for and the price he's willing to pay to achieve it. How big a person is is determined by the cause he or she lives for and the price that fellow is willing to pay to achieve it. We therefore have to be very careful and deliberately invest in our names as a unique entity on earth. All of us are born with gifts and graces. And all of us, by the grace of God, gives us opportunities. Please, when you have this opportunity, try and work very hard on your name. I'm not talking about titles and people of position. Such people 
could be accorded some protocols because of the positions they occupy. But what I mean is this, Job 29. I'll just read about Job so that at least, uh, just to illustrate what I mean by good names and ending good names. Job 29, I'll start from 7. When I went to the gate of the city and took my seat in the public square, the young men saw me and stepped aside, and the old men rose to their feet. The young men saw Job and they stepped aside, and the elderly men stood to their feet. The chief men refrained from speaking and covered their mouth with their hands. The voices of the nobles were hushed, and their tongues stuck to the roof of their mouth. Whoever heard me spoke well of me, and those who saw me commended me. No wonder even God himself commended Job. Now listen to verse 12. How could he get this great name? Because I rescued the poor who cried for help. And the fatherless who had none to assist them. The one who was dying blessed me. I made the widow's heart sing. I put on righteousness as my clothing. Justice was my rope and my turban. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. So when they saw him coming, they stood. Look at what he did. He went down and picked the poor. He invested into human beings. Let me say that the majority of us here are connected to parliament. And we need to serve people. Mother Teresa worked in the ghettos. But when she died, the whole world stood in awe of her. Please. Good names are better than good positions. A great man indeed, in all respect. And for Job, the respect came naturally because the people saw that he was invested into human beings. And that one lifted him above his peers. Let me say this. If you want to have a good name or a great name, you have to make some sacrifices. Like Jesus, go the extra mile. You have to make yourself nothing. You see, but leadership sometimes is interpreted as showmanship. It's to make your enemies fear you and you, even your, your friends admire you. So the way we carry ourselves, it doesn't even allow the common person to come close to you. And how much more to bless them. Please, let's loosen up. And let us work rather on a good name. It is better than riches. Beyond all that I've said, I want to offer just one suggestion to all of us who desire to have good name. You need to serve humanity. Now, the suggestion that I'm going to offer is this. Live and work for the good of people. Live and work for the good of people. Maybe I should turn here and look at the face of my parliamentarians. You are making democracy too expensive. Yeah. The monetization of what we call democracy is dangerous. Soon, we are not going to have good leaders because we will need people who have cash. And it doesn't matter where they got the money from. They will win the constituency election. Now, this thing is dangerous. If we think that we cannot follow this American democracy, please, let us stop it. Let us design something that will help this nation. It is dangerous. And I'm even afraid of the future. I'm afraid of the future. How can you deceive people just by buying cutlass for them? And you pride yourself in it. What a shame. 
I pray that God will save this land. God will save this land. Because many of us are poor. Instead of investing into them, you deceive them with lanterns and cutlasses. May God have mercy upon us. See, when you do this, the day you are no longer the constituent's leader, nobody cares about you. Now we should all critically examine the course we live for and the price we are willing to pay to achieve it. Now, why are you in politics? Why are you a pastor? Why are you a teacher? Why are you a lawyer? Why are you a chief? What is your motivation? Is it money? Is it power? Is it fame? I'll take my last test and then I'll call it a day. Esther chapter 10. I read verse 3. Esther chapter 10 and verse 3. Mordecai, the Jew, was second in rank to King Xerxes, preeminent among the Jews. He towered above all of them. Why? And held by the Jews themselves in high esteem by his many followers because he went for the good of his people and spoke up for the welfare of the Jews. If you work for the good of your people and you speak up for the welfare of your people, you will be preeminent. You'll be held in high esteem. And when you are gone, your name will live on. Let me reiterate this point. That opportunity is not always available. When we have opportunity, please, Galatians says do. And he says do good. When you rise in authority, it is not for amassing wealth, but to build people up. It is to work for the good of the people and speak for the welfare of your people. The Lord reigns. And when he reigns, the Bible says, let the earth rejoice and let the people be glad. I pray that as you lead our constituencies, may the people rejoice. May they be glad because of you. A good name is better than riches. God bless us all.